Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that's, that's an excellent question. And, and you, you hit on a key point of it, and that is approaching retirement. All of the proposals that have been that have been made have no changes for people above the age of 60. The majority of the changes that have been proposed, I'm sorry, proposed, the majority of the changes that have been proposed don't have changes for, for anybody under the age of 55. I'm 43. You're approaching retirement. What I'll tell you is that if we don't make changes to the system, not only am I not going to receive the benefits when I reach retirement age, but the benefits that you're receiving will diminish during your retirement. It's a, it, it, it's mad. We're living a lot longer than we used to. We're living a lot longer than we used to, and so the funding formula has got to change. And so it, it should be actuarially sound, just like pensions are required to be actuarially sound. And uh, I don't think that, that you or anybody else uh, above the age of 60 has got to worry about your Medicare and Social Security benefits as long as we don't do nothing. If we do nothing, the system will go under for all of us. But look, it's my act, ladies and gentlemen. And, and if doing nothing, if, if these changes had been made 15 years ago, they would have been mine. But, but if we just said for every for every year that you're under the age of 60, you have to work one additional month to receive full benefits, that would make a tremendous difference in the form. And, and I think that if we as members of Congress trusted the general public enough to come out and actually give them a specific formula and show them what the changes would be, I, I think we'd be much more likely to receive the support of the public. Of course, minor changes like that. 